Get up, get out, get around, and do it, do it! <laughs> hey guys, how's everyone doing today? I'm doing well, thank you for asking. Today, you're fixing to get a treat. You're fixing to hear some of the 10 best movies ever made in the history of horror, bar none. These movies mostly are from the 70s, maybe a couple from the early 80s, uh, I think one from the 90s, and maybe one from the later 2000s. So, um, my thoughts and opinions on horror are, I like more the old school horror uh, from the 70s and 80s because it had more of a gritty, dirty, grainier, uh, darker... Uh, feel to it. Uh, it, it. It's a whole different ball game compared to what you see nowadays. Uh, these movies that I'm going to go over are pretty much, uh, I'm pretty much staying away from the slasher genre except for two of my choices. Uh, they are considered slashers but at the same time there's an element to them that for me uh, propels them into a little different direction um, especially the one movie that I'm gonna connect with a little bit more and we'll get to that here in just a minute so without further ado let's go on to what I consider to be the 10 best horror films that you can watch let's do this now I do have my notebook. I have things wrote down. Uh, I'm going to go over the movie. I'm just going to give a just a brief outline, a brief thing on the movies, and uh, then we'll move on. So here we go. These are in no particular order. Uh, it's just what I wrote down, and here we go. Number one is Scream from 1996. Stars Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, David Arquette. Keith Urch, <laughs> Urich, uh, Matthew Leonard, and uh, even an amazing opening to the movie starring the great Drew Barrymore. As far as the story goes, just a brief story. A uh, year after the murder of her mother, a teenage girl, Sidney Prescott, played by Nev Campbell, is targeted and terrorized by a killer as part of a deadly game. Now I'm going to give you just kind of my thoughts and opinions. Uh, they may be uh, short and quick, or they may be kind of more explained and to the, and uh, a little bit more, you know, explained. <laughs> so here we go. One of the best openings in horror history, bar none. The the first several minutes of that movie with Drew Barrymore are legendary. They really are. Now I don't talk a whole lot about Scream. I'm not a huge Scream fan, but the first movie is really good, really uh, what I consider an original and a classic and very good. So um, what it did in the 90s, uh, 1996, is it made horror slashers popular again. That's right, this movie might be a slasher. So that I tried to stay away from slashers because there's so many and so many that I love. But I had to include a couple in here uh, that were kind of above uh, and beyond just a slasher. So uh, that's my opinion. Uh, they, this movie has great likable characters. They all do a great job uh, with their parts. Um, and they're all, uh, as, uh, as of today, they're all legendary, classic, wonderful actors uh, that we all know and love with Scream because... Uh, we've had four movies, and we're, and they're working on a fifth movie. So these characters have been with us for a lot of years, and they're they're just good, likable characters. It's good storytelling, with a surprise twist that I don't believe anyone really seen coming. So that was good. Uh, you have the popular phrases of "What's your favorite scary movie?" to "I'll be right back." Never say that in a scary movie. Never say that. You won't be right back, probably. Uh, and also, this movie introduces a uh, 
new ho uh, horror icon uh, that was really sorely needed. Uh, it's not easy to get mainstream public and the horror fan base on board with new horror characters outside of Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger, even Leatherface, you know, even Chucky. It's hard to get people on board with different and new characters. So what this movie did was it brought in Ghostface. Legendary, you know, status now. Uh, you know, everybody knows Ghostface. So, very good. Uh, this is a really good movie, in my opinion. Uh, in my opinion, it could be a standalone, a standalone movie. Most movies don't need sequels. And, and, and that goes for pretty much every movie you watch. <laughs> so, and every movie probably on my list. Um, and the thing about this movie is it could actually be a true story. Uh, you hear cases of stuff like this a lot of times. I'm sure. And even if you don't, there could be cases like this. Because it's, it's very uh, doable, very relatable. So that's... Scream from 1996. All right, the next one that we have. Remember, these are in no particular order. We have Amityville Horror from 1979. Stars James Brolin, Margot Kidder, and Rod Steiger. Or Stiger, Steiger probably. Let's go over the story. Story. As newlyweds move into a house where mass murders were committed only to find out the house is possessed and out possibly to get them next. Now my thoughts and opinions are just kind of brief on this movie. So here we go. It's well acted. It's creepy. Uh, it's a timeless story of an evil spirit uh, possessing a living being and even a non-living being such as the house. Um, it's an iconic house. Speaking of the house, it's an iconic house with the slanted roof line and the, the windows that look like eyes. Uh, trivia, a little story on that, is uh, they've actually remodeled the house and taken away those windows, unfortunately. Uh, the cinematography on this movie, great. And that's the, ca that's the case that you're going to find... And all of these movies, the cinematography, the musical score, the acting, the set design, the lighting, just everything about these movies comes to life and just brings these movies into a different realm than most of your other movies out there. That's what largely in part separates these movies and makes them the classics, uh, the legendary uh, cinematic masterpieces that they are. So... Let's continue. And sometimes less is more. Uh, some of these movies, you know, you're not on this wild roller coaster the whole entire time like some movies are nowadays. With every corner uh, that you turn, something popping out at you with jump scares and, and something always loud and in your face. A lot of these movies incorporate uh, quiet time and gives you time to kind of look around and wonder about things and, and think and uh, soak in some of what's happened. Uh, you don't get a lot. You don't get a lot of that with a lot of newer movies. Uh, the camera work. Uh, what I like about that is a lot of times in these older movies you get a lot of uh, close-up camera work, like on their faces and their eyes and expressions and and all that. And you get a real sense of fear and danger out of uh, this movie and and all of these movies. They're they all incorporate a lot of these same things. So that is my thoughts and opinions, pretty much on. Amityville Horror from 1979. All right, now we have The Shining from 1980. Stars Jack Nicholson, Shelley Duvall, and Danny Lloyd. The story, a family takes on the job of overseeing the Overlook Hotel during the off-season. It's not long the hotel starts mentally possessing the father and the violence while the son begins to experience a gift called The Shining. It's a psychic ability that lets him see the horrific acts from the past and future. And I'm not going to be able to say enough about this movie. It's possibly in my all-time like top three movies. 
uh, horror. It's just that good. <laughs> so my thoughts and opinions are just kind of to the point here. So let's go. Uh, amazing storytelling. From the very beginning of the movie to the very end of the movie, uh, this movie has me uh, at attention. I'm fully invested in the movie just from uh, the soundtrack, uh, the soundtrack, the musical score, the acting. Uh, Jack Nicholson, just from the beginning, comes off as a troubled individual. Uh, he just there's something not right about him even from the beginning. So it's just it's so captivating that I just love it. Uh, as again again the amazing acting from Jack uh, from Jack Nicholson, Shelley Duvall, and and Danny, uh, and then the atmosphere of the hotel itself, the creepy halls, the creepy spirits that you might see along the way, from the little girls to the creepy nude woman that you might see, you might see. Um, it's not overdone and it's it, it comes off as something that's almost real that you could at least imagine uh, that you might see in your head if you're uh, if you're going through these things if you're being possessed to some degree uh, it's it's things that you could possibly really imagine it's not so over the top um, what I like is uh, I like seeing Jack go from normal to insane and uh, his progression, uh, you can see when it snaps in him, and it's it's just so cool. Uh, it's scary. You know, he takes that role and just owns it. Love it. Uh, one of the greatest movies ever. <laughs> um, and, you, and you get some lines from this movie, and I'm going to butcher them. I didn't look them up. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to just try to remember for best uh, the best I could. Uh, the, the part where he... Uh, is uh, walking up the stairs trying to get Shelly Duvall, you know, his wife, and she's swinging the bat, eh, 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 like that, and, and she's like, you know, you're going to hurt me, you're going to kill me, or whatever, and he's like, I just want to bash your freaking skull in. Man, I, I love that part. And the part where he's on the typewriter, when you hear me doing that, stay the gun, you know, and he just starts going off on her, and and all that, ah, that is just so, so great. <laughs> and of course, the classic when he breaks in the door with the, with the axe or whatever, and here's Johnny. Uh, just good stuff from start to finish. And the and the the musical score for this movie is just totally uh, unsettling and just amazing. Just great stuff from beginning to end. <laughs> so that's The Shining from 1980. All right, and here we are. My favorite found footage movie of all time, and quite possibly just the best one for everyone of all time, and it should be anyway. It's The Blair Witch Project from 1999. It stars Heather Donahue, Michael Williams, and Joshua Leonard. And yes, they use their names in the movie as well. The story is... Three film students vanish after traveling into a Maryland forest to film a documentary on the local Blair Witch legend, leaving only their found footage behind. My thoughts on this, and I can't go over it enough, I can't put enough in here, I can't write enough, I can't express enough with my words how I feel about this movie. But, the best found footage movie ever creepy, it's heart pounding, it's mesmerizing, it's real. The acting is not scripted, so it comes off as real. These actors were basically given no script, they were basically given just guidelines and little notes along the way, little cues here and there uh, with sound cues and, and other such things, and they basically just acted their way through the movie <laughs> until it was over. I mean, they didn't really know anything that was going on. They were just given small glimpses and cues of what to do. And that's why the movie comes off as so real, because they're really, you know, reacting and, and doing these things. You know, they're just moving along uh, down this list of things that these directors and producers wanted them to do. So it comes off as real. 
And that's what's perfect about this movie and what uh, no other found footage movie has done to date is look and act and feel real. And I've seen all of them made. There's some decent ones. Cloverfield decent. Uh, high, high, not high tension, but uh, uh, there's another one. I can't remember the name anyway. But there's a few of them I've seen. Yeah, Chernobyl. I like Chernobyl, and it's kind of back and forth found footage with, you know, normal, you know, third person or whatever uh, filming. It's kind of back and forth. So, uh, but there's tons of them out there, and I've seen them all. VHS, and I've seen this, and I've seen all of them. This one here, The Blair Witch Project, is by far the best of all, all time. <laughs> so, uh, let's face it, woods are always scary. It don't matter. Woods are always scary, especially at night. Uh, great location. Uh, you meet a few memorable characters along the way, and they got a couple funny lines along the way, a couple of them do. And, uh, and the movie itself was an internet sensation. It was the first movie of its kind to promote itself online and to have a fully dedicated website uh, where you could go and look at all the information and clips and pictures and all kinds of stuff. And it was set up in a way uh, that uh, to make you, the viewer, think that it's real. So from the very beginning, before the movie even comes out with the trailer and then the website and everything it's geared and marketed as real and unfortunately a lot of people didn't like that a lot of people felt like uh, they got uh, duped or you know fooled and and they didn't like that and and in the Blair Witch Project less is more like I always say use your imagination you don't have to be spoon-fed everything and that goes towards the witch spoiler review but it's you know, it's uh, 21 years old now. You don't really see the witch. So, you know, a lot of people didn't like that. I personally don't mind. To me, that makes it more real. It's psychological. It's out of frame. It's out of mind. It's, you know, you're, you're, you're having to just guess and, and use your imagination on these things. That, to me, is what made the Blair Witch so perfect. It's real life. What seems more real, you know, the Blair Witch Project or Godzilla? Right? <laughs> the Blair Witch Project comes off as real. So, that is my favorite found footage movie. The Blair Witch Project from 1999. Alright, the next one, guys, is The Omen from 1976. This movie stars Gregory Peck, Lee Remick, Harvey Stevens. The story is, mysterious deaths surround an American ambassador. Could the child he is raising be the Antichrist, the devil's own son? And you'll notice that theme with a lot of these movies. A lot of them are based around religion, or at least real close to it. Um, and I'm not religious. I used to follow Christianity, and I have read the Bible, and I've been to church a million times, and all that good stuff. But I am not uh, religious anymore, but I still enjoy these movies because, let's face it, if you read the Bible and you, and you know the stories and, you're, and you watch videos about stories and all this other stuff, you know that there's a lot of creepy, crazy, off-the-wall stuff that's in the Bible. So, you can make good movies, good TV, good whatever <laughs> from the Bible because it's, it's full of some crazy stuff. So... Even though you might not be religious, you can still enjoy these movies. Just keep an open mind. Take things with a grain of salt. Take it as just a crazy made-up story. That's it. Because that's what it is. So, um, let's go on to my thoughts. Uh, the cinematography is great. Uh, again, I love the close-ups of the faces, different views. I love the musical score. And this sends chills up your spine, which is the case for most of these movies. Uh, the musical score in movies is so important uh, to the movie and how it makes you feel. Um, when you get a musical a musical score and uh, uh, and get it right in the movie, it, it propels it to a whole new level. Um, the acting uh, is top notch, uh, even from the young son Damien. He doesn't even really speak. 
uh, and just uses facial expressions and uh, the camera close-ups and with the music going over that uh, it just it's all you need you don't even need words when you have someone that knows what they're doing to that degree you don't even need words to get the point across that's what's so great you know a lot of these movies that are evolved around religion uh, just you got to keep your mind open to it and uh, really it, it they can be some of the the greatest movies that you ever see because they're, the Bible is so full of that kind of crazy stuff so yeah the omen is just classic 70s gritty grainy scary uh, uh, horror it's just good stuff all right the next one is the exorcist from 1973 and I cannot believe this movie's that old I was born in 71 good grief all right it stars Ellen Burstyn Burst, whatever the name is Burstyn Max von Sedow Linda Blair uh, the story is when a 12 year old girl is possessed by a mysterious entity her mother seeks the help of two priests to save her my thoughts and opinions here we go again another movie based loosely around religion uh, keep an open mind and just enjoy. Uh, very controversial for its time. Uh, the head spinning, vomiting, uh, sexual provocative moments from such a young girl. Um, people were generally scared to death of this movie. Uh, there were stories and news clips of, every, uh, of people running out of theaters, getting sick, throwing up, crying, uh, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, you got to think, this is the 70s. Okay, we're we're accustomed to all this stuff by now. This stuff doesn't phase us. Even real life deaths and and stuff like that hardly phase us anymore because we're just so used to it. Um, but this was in the 70s, so you gotta you gotta uh, you gotta remember those things whenever you uh, watch the movies and whenever you uh, talk about movies and and all that stuff. And with TV, it's all the same. You know, the same thing as well. You gotta remember the time frame it's in, and and kind of adjust your thoughts and opinions accordingly. Um, so let's go here. Um, uh, of course, as normal, the cinematography uh, is great. The way it captures different things, uh, again, consistent with all these movies that I'm mentioning, uh, just different angles and different moments and different movements and. And just different stuff that they that they do uh, to capture your attention and to and to spook you and to, and to pull you into these movies, uh, it, it's legendary. You know that's that's why these movies are gonna last forever. You know they're gonna last forever. No matter if they remake them, these originals are gonna last forever. Uh, the acting from everyone in this movie is great, but we have to give props to Linda Blair for portraying the child Reagan. Uh, so well at such a young age you know there was a lot expected of her out of this movie uh, from you know all that stuff that I mentioned you know her having to do all that uh, was pretty taxing on her I'm sure and uh, she did a great job a very good job so that's the Exodus uh, Exorcist from 1973 all right the next one is Hereditary from 2018. Yeah, all right. A newer movie. Some of you guys might connect with this one. <laughs> or maybe not. It stars Alex Wolf, Gabriel Byrne, possibly that's the name, uh, Tony Coletti, or Colette, Millie Shapiro. Now, I'm not real good at, at uh, pronouncing names, so please forgive me on those. Um, so here's a story. When Annie's mom passes away, she and the family try to deal with things their own way. Before long, strange and supernatural things start to happen. What has the mentally ill, now dead grandmother passed on to the next generation? My thoughts and opinions. <laughs> and I really can't say enough about this movie again. My vocabulary is limited. I can only say so much. I can only write so much. But... An amazing story 
although maybe confusing. You do have to rewatch this, and I will tell you right now that it's good to go on YouTube after you watch and look up uh, the meaning behind it. You know, uh, th there's a lot of videos on there where they'll go through and they'll talk about stuff and they'll show you and talk to you about things that you might not have even seen or heard. Uh, so it's good to go to YouTube and look at those videos and uh, get yourself really uh, invested fully in this movie. Uh, the acting is second to none by all the actors. I can't really pick out any one actor. Uh, they're just, they just all do amazing in this movie. They really do. Uh, the cinematography, the set design, the lighting, the creative use of angles, um, as I mentioned in these other movies, uh, it's just things you don't really always see in movies, especially today. Uh, this movie was really a surprise, and I'm really glad that I watched it. I've only, I only finally watched it about two months ago something like that so uh, the crazy twists uh, the jaw-dropping moment uh, the haunting musical score and when I say that there are jaw-dropping moments there's a couple of moments in there uh, that you're gonna you're not gonna believe but it's gonna throw you for a loop and uh, a hereditary is one of those movies uh, that only comes along ever so often so it is uh, highly recommended if you're looking for a more up-to-date, newer kind of horror movie. Definitely a great movie. But again, go to YouTube afterwards and watch some, you know, in-depth analysis of the, of the movie. Great movie. All right, on to the next. All right, guys. This one's a movie you might not have heard of or you don't really hear much of. It's called The Entity, and it came out in 1982, and I believe came out in 1983 in the U.S. Uh, it stars Barbara, stars Barbara Hershey, Ron Silver, and David La Boisa, something like that. Uh, story goes, a mother of three is not only struggling to get their lives on track, uh, being a single mom, but also finds herself fighting an unseen force, an entity. That is attacking her. She reaches out for help, but how do you fight something that you can't see? Uh, kind of my thoughts and opinions on this. Uh, this movie is often forgotten by most. I just said that. Uh, it's gritty, aggressive, uh, makes you wonder if we're truly alone. Uh, I personally believe in the afterlife. Uh, I've had a couple of experiences when I was a kid, several times uh, in my teenage years. And then one about 2014, somewhere in there, 14, 15, somewhere in there. So uh, I, I truly believe in the afterlife. So movies like this are really interesting to me. Uh, anyway, I do believe in the paranormal, but do I believe in them to the degree of being attacked like this and, uh, and all that? You know, I don't know. Anything's possible. We don't know much of anything, let's be honest. Uh, it's very unsettling at moments, but... It's a great, it's a great movie. Suspenseful, creepy. Uh, the acting's good. Uh, the things that they do to try to solve these problems, uh, to try and help out the mom. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's pretty cool how they, they try and use science and all that to try and help and figure out all this stuff. So, uh, anyway, uh, this is, this is a very uh, unique movie and one that you just don't hear a lot of. But I do recommend it. It's called The Entity, and it is from 1982-1983. All right. The next one, guys, is A Nightmare on Elm Street from 1984. Yes, the original. It stars John Saxon, Heather Longenkamp, and Robert England. And, of course, you know all these movies star, actually, a handful of other people. But we just go over the main guys. We, we, just, we just go with the main people story is Nancy and her friends are being tormented by a crazy clawed killer in their dreams Freddy Krueger <laughs> sorry how can you win the fight if you're sleeping now let's go on to a few thoughts and opinions here as someone who has had nightmares his whole life 
me, I can connect with this movie. Robert England owns the role of Freddy. This movie is dark in tone, and the underlying story uh, in the past of Freddy isn't good. It's not really pushed out there, but it revolves around Freddy being involved with little kids. Uh, something many people don't know about the movie, really. It is creepy. Uh, the first two movies are dark and serious in tone. Uh, the score, amazing. We all know the dum 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 dum. One, two, Freddy's coming. You know all that. Anyway, the score, the set, you know, the iconic house, uh, which, in case you didn't know, is actually just down the road from the original Michael Myers house. In case you didn't know that. Uh, the sets, the iconic character, it's all cinema gold. And this is the other movie I was talking about in the beginning where I might have a couple of slashers, but they have different kind of, uh, they have more to the story really than just slashing, in my opinion. Um, and this one touches on, like I, like I mentioned, uh, nightmares. And I've had uh, n nightmares and crazy bad dreams my whole entire life since I was a little bitty, teeny tiny kid. So... Uh, this movie kind of touches uh, me in the feels right there because I understand what it's like. I'm just glad that I don't have anyone uh, like Freddy Krueger uh, who's after me. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, that is A Nightmare on Elm Street from 1984. Great music, uh, great movie. Alright guys, I think this is the final one, number 10. Remember, they're, no in, they're not in any kind of order of importance. I'm just... Uh, I just wrote them down, and this is number 10. We have Jaws from 1975. Stars Roy Sh uh, Sh uh, Scheider, Robert Shaw, Richard Dreyfuss. The story is a killer shark has found its way to a normally quiet beach community. It's found a taste for a different prey, humans. Now it's up to a local sheriff, um, a marine biologist, and an old fisherman to hunt it down and kill it. My thoughts and opinions condensed quickly. Here we go. This movie makes people nervous to go in lakes, oceans, and even swimming pools. Yes, it does. <laughs> the acting by the main cast is always spot on. These guys look like they were just made for this movie. Uh, they take the roles and the characters and they own every minute of it. Uh, they're intense the whole time. Uh, and just, they really just do such a wonderful job on the acting. Uh, the use of the animatronic and real life sharks is virtually seamless. Uh, it's all done so well. Uh, if you know the story behind it, and I don't, I'm not going to go into great t details, but uh, they had issues with the. Uh, animatronic shark you know getting weighed down and heavy uh, from all the water soaking into it and uh, so they had to cut scenes out and try to work around it and work around this and use some real shark footage and and then use just like uh, where you would see more movement you know like it crashing into boats or crashing into this or that or pulling these barrels off and doing other uh, doing other things instead of actually showing the shark so much you get more along uh, the lines of its actions and what it's doing and you know what that works uh, because like I've said before less is more it lets you use your mind because you already know that there's a shark there we don't have to see the shark we know there's a shark all you need to see and know is what it's doing the damage that it's gonna do and that it can do so uh, it's, it's amazing they did a great job uh, of course the musical score uh, is as much timeless as the movie itself. You know, the, the musical score uh, for Jaws just gets you like this to begin with. So, and, and again, it's like all these other movies that I'm talking about, they all have all that in common. Everything is in common with these movies, and that's why they work so well. <laughs> Uh, the, the suspense and uneasiness are so perfect in this movie. You don't even have 
to see the shark, to feel uh, the anxiety. And uh, there have been sequels and other shark movies, and uh, but this is the classic one. You know, this is all you need. It does it better than all of them. And uh, at the end of the day, remember, folks, uh, you're going to need a bigger boat. Pretty much a quote from the movie right there, guys. Uh, well, that's it. That is my top ten horror movies of all time. And there's a million others that I could have put in there. But I strictly wanted to go with these movies uh, with this kind of a theme uh, and, and kind of stories that they deal with rather than just throwing in Halloween Friday 13th, all the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, uh, Saw, and uh, Shaun of the Dead, and uh, you know, all these other movies that, that, that we all know and love. Uh, there's a million of them out there, uh, Poltergeist, and Cujo, and uh, Pet Cemetery. I mean, the list goes on, and on, and on, and on. You know, The Thing... <laughs> Aliens. Uh, there's so much that we could put in there, and it would be a non-stop, never-ending video. Uh, but these here, I felt, were uh, the gritty, dirty, nasty movies that really bring horror uh, to where it needs to be uh, today. Uh, if people follow the guidelines for these kind of movies and incorporate some new ideas and some new things in there, We'd have really good horror movies again today. So I hope you enjoyed this little Halloween uh, treat that I did for you. It took a lot of time putting all this together. Matter of fact, this is the second shot that I've done of it. I didn't like what I did the first time, so I redid everything from the scripts to the videos, everything. <laughs> it took a while. So, guys, I hope you love it. I hope you appreciate it. Hope you like, share, subscribe, and comment. Tell me all your favorite movies in the comments. List some uh, th that I might have talked about and tell me what you think of them. Alright? Don't forget, guys. Get up. Get out. Get rad. And do it to it. And have a spooktacular time doing it. <laughs> now go watch all them movies. Happy Halloween, guys. Mwah. Get up, get out, get ran, and do it, do it!